Good morning, church family. Today we're continuing in our daily Devo series and we're in the book of Colossians. And we saw in the beginning of Colossians, it is a letter written by Paul to a church that he didn't start and a church that he's actually never met in person. But a friend of his has told them about the issues that the church of Colossae is facing. So he is writing to them and he starts his letter by introducing himself. And then he begins to address the church and establish the greatness of Christ, who Christ is as the exalted Messiah, who Christ is as the savior, making sure they have a proper high view of Jesus. Then he begins to share some of the ways that he suffered for Jesus, that he suffered for Christ and how that is isn't a burden, but a glorious, blessed thing that he would be able to suffer with Christ on behalf of the gospel to make Jesus known. And now that brings us to chapter three. And what the overall view of chapter three is, okay, how are we now to live at, in Christ? And what Jesus has done, it describes us as the body of believers. How is this body of believers? How is Christ's kingdom to live? And, and he starts chapter three saying, hey, if you've been raised with Christ, if you've stepped away from the former things, your focus is no longer on the world. Your focus is on him. Your focus is on him who, who rose back up with the father in anticipation of what he is doing in you and in anticipation of his return. It says in verse four, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then also you will appear with him in glory. It's anticipate the day where Jesus will return and his body of believers will live with him and the father for eternity. And so it's this idea of you, if you've placed your view, belief in Christ, you are established, you are justified as a new creation in him. Now live in that new creation. Begin to attack sin, begin to attack your old way of living, to live like the new creation that you are in Christ because of what he has done for you. And so then he continues to, okay, if you're gonna live like this new creation, if you're going to live like who you are in Christ and who are you going to be in him and the work that he's done in you for eternity, well, there's work that needs to be done. He says, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual morality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them. So he's saying, hey, you're a new creation. You used to live in sexual immorality, vain speech, seeking what the world has to offer, seeking all these desires, these things that will just feed your passions, these, these fleeting pleasures, these fleeting things that, are, that we believe can provide us value, but do not. He said, you used to walk in them. You used to serve them. You used to be like one enslaved to them, but you're not anymore. And as a believer, as a new creation, you need to set yourself out to attack those things, to rid yourself of the ways that that old self tries to remain. And so we see, hey, rid yourself of the old self. Don't let that take root. And then he says, he continues in, in this, what we need to lay aside, we need to lay aside anger, wrath, malice, slander. And then he continues on in verse nine, do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and having put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all in all. So he says, hey, a part of that putting off the old self is bringing on the new self. And a big part of that new self you have in Christ is in being his kingdom, you're united together. In the divides that once existed of slave, of free, of Gentile, of Jew, those don't exist anymore. In the new creation, in this new kingdom, in Christ's kingdom, y'all are all united. You're to live together in laying aside the old self, laying aside anger, slander, to now live with each other in the love of Christ. And then it begins to describe all of what this new self entails. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one is a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you may also forgive. And so he continues to share all these things that are going to do. And in the end of the chapter, he even applies it to, to like the Roman household. He tells in the picture the, to his Colossians, hey, here's this idea of the Roman household that you know, where the patriarch is often dominant. Well, here's how that's going to change in the kingdom of God. 
And he, he, he describes what the roles of wives are to be in the kingdom of God, the roles of husbands who are supposed to surrender themselves to the leading of Christ, to lead their wives and their children with humility. It describes the way children are to obey their parents and seek to please the Lord. It describes how servants are supposed to act. It, he ends it with this very then specific application of this is how you live different in the kingdom. But going back a little bit, he, we see in verse 12, he describes all of these ways we should live different. We should be meek, humble, compassionate hearts, united together, focused within each other. He says, but in verse 14, and above all else, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful. Put on love and put on the peace of Christ. Above all, we, we, are, called, we are called to lay aside the old self. We are called to step away from sexual immorality, lying, slander, anger, wrath, vengeance, hatred of each other, disunity. Those are things we as believers are to step away from. As believers, we're supposed to be kind, compassionate. Believing husbands are supposed to humbly lead their wives. Believing wives are to to follow their husbands, to love them, care for them. They are to submit to and care for one another as they submit to Christ. That is what husband and wife are supposed to do. Kids are supposed to listen. We know all these things. But we see is above all put on love and have the peace of Christ. And what this shows is at the core of living in the new self is having Christ's love rooted in my heart and his peace of his love and what he's done for me rooted in my heart. There's a reason that Colossians starts with who Christ is. There's a reason, another letter of Paul, uh, Ephesians, he starts with explaining all that Christ has done according to the will of God. Then he switches into kingdom living. Is Hey, for this kingdom living to really work, you have to really live in Christ's love. And as you go about seeking to lay aside the old self, as you go about seeking to live in the new self and all that it entails, you have to do it from a place of resting in the love of Christ, experiencing the peace of the love of Christ. An example I have is recently my wife and I, we dealt with some mold issues in our apartment. And we were doing lots of things. It was just little spots of mold. We were doing lots of things to take care of the mold as we saw it. We had damp ribs that were supposed to be helping reduce the moisture. We had cleaner that we were using when we spotted it. But guess what? It kept coming back. We were only chasing the symptoms. We were only chasing the mold that we saw on the surface. We weren't addressing the issue with our apartment that caused the humidity and moisture levels to be so high that mold was occurring. And it wasn't until we dealt with that that the mold issues ended. Just in the same way, if all we do is run around trying to make sure from my strength I'm kind to people, I'm humble and patient, or trying to run around in my own strength. Well, I gotta make sure I don't give into that sin, that less. If it's all just about my ability to do so and I'm just chasing symptoms or, or, or changing these outward behaviors without first realizing what needs to happen is the love of Christ and his peace in my heart, then I am missing out on what allows the believer to put on the new self and cast away the old self. What does the renewing work is Christ in me. And so, believers, this makes it clear. We are to fight against sin. We are to seek to lay aside the old self every day and pursue living in the new self, which has been made available to us through Christ. And we have the Holy Spirit to do it. But we must make sure that as we are putting in the work to live in the ways the new self is described and to lay aside the old self, that we're always doing it from a dependence on the person of Christ and a rich enjoyment of his love each day. With that being said, church family, have a blessed day.